What's up guys, Card Protagonist here, and today I'll be doing an all new deck profile of my Prism deck from the all new Clan Booster for Bermuda Triangles. So finally, Prism has got a new support, I'm really happy about it because it actually made um, huge changes to the Prism deck, which it used to be um, Libric deck or Stride deck uh, or Legion deck, and now it is a Stride deck because our dear Vert has finally have uh, evolved form, and her evolved form is actually pretty good because she gives you additional attacks in addition to your Break Right bonus. So, I'm going to go... So this deck actually focuses a lot on the offensive skill of its next stage -y. I'll call it the next stage, but although it's not really a next stage, but it's like next stage. Can't really explain. Um, her, offense, her, her offense is mostly based on her strides, and her defense is when you're riding her, you will gain so much defense. If you watch my uh, card fight video, which you guys dislike anyway, um, I've done some skill which allows you to like easily guard up every single attack of your opponents when you perform um, G Guardian. This makes her really really tanky because you can bring her up to 26k easily with this deck. So imagine a 26k base Vanguard which means like a super Dragonic Overlord at the end. Yeah, this deck is freaking uh, freaking amazing. So let's go on to the deck profile and I'll explain uh, what the card does and how you can use their skills. Because this, um, this deck, to be honest, is one of the most complicated decks. Unlike um, Vanilla Clans like Royal Paladins and Go Paladins, which is just add power, uh, Vermouth Triangle has a lot of effects, which is actually very, very confusing to play. So if you want to learn more, you actually want, might want to practice more before playtesting. So yeah, let's get on the deck profile. First, the great trees we play is um, four copies of the new... A ruby, is it is her name Ruby? Garnet, sorry, yeah. A brand new Prism Garnet. So she is our boss mo she's the boss of the deck. She looks very nice and she's the red she's the red one. I believe Bermuda has red, blue and red, blue and green. So she's the red one. Her skill is limit break four. Whenever you're in limit break four, you when she attacks you can super up to super call up to three prism from your hand. If you call three prism this way, if you call three cards this way, she gains additional skill. So limit break five. Limit break 5, you can get additional drive checks. So this is really good it's because it's even when you're not striding, or after you use her and after you use her and you become a break ride, you still get an additional drive check, which is freaking amazing because there's additional cards into your hand, so it's very good. Um another thing to note is you do not need to activate her limit break skill. You can just call three and don't get her limit break five skill. So you can just like limit break four, just call three to as call three regards for additional attacks, it's fine that way. So yeah, that's her skill. Basically what you do is you combine her, her skill with her so that you can get a double triple drive. Very nice card, really like it. And what makes this card freaking amazing is her second skill. Um, her skill is act, uh, auto, Vanguard Circle. When a card is when a card on your field other when your other card on the field get bounced back to your hand, you may e special complex one prism card in your damage zone. If you do, select one unit on the field and gains plus 5k power. So, basically just like that, and if you use cards like your G Guardians, which allows you to bounce other cards back into your hand while guarding, you can trigger her skill, which allows her to gain plus 5k power. And it's not once per turn. So if you use double G Guardians, and your, if your opponent's going to do like 7 attacks, oh, good luck, because your, that 7 attack is never going through. Because that is, that is how you can defend with this deck. This deck is really amazing at defense and offense. So I really recall if you like uh, Mermaids, this deck is really for you because I really like the deck. I enjoy the deck a lot. Alright, so next we uh, play 4 copies of Vert. Alright, if you guys want, you can also play Labrador. Um, I've been testing Labrador, but for the sake of the deck profile and to show off new cards, I'll be using her for now. You could also use Labrador to replace Garnet if you want to. Labrador is Emmy. Yeah. Very good because uh, instead of the limit break five, you still can get the additional crit and 10k power, which is more cards for your opponent to guard. So it's still very good. The skill is exactly the same. Super core three, when this card attacks and you gain the additional power. So it's the same. Um, so uh, for the case where you actually heal during your your triple drive, you won't get a third drive check, which is a risk sometimes to take. But her skill, the defensive skill, is too good to pass on. So that's why if you if you're a budget player, you could play her. Yeah, if you're like me, I I I swap them out sometimes. You could play a mixture of them actually. So yeah. Just something to note. Alright, next we go on to Vert. 
So basically, she's our classic break, right? Lane break four. When a card, when a when you do a break, right, you can bounce back two cards on your field and draw one card, and it, the Vanguard gives us ten k power. So how do you combine with her is, you she will trigger off a card. She will allow you to write a card from your hand and break right and resend the Vanguard. So, I'll show you how it works later on. So she's good because she's the vert that allows you to do the break right, so that your second attack will hit like a truck instead of like a wet towel, a wet noodle. So another skill is when you control four or more boomers on the field, you gain a 2k power when it attacks. So it's good against cost rights, I guess. But the main reason to play here is because your second attack won't hit like a wet noodle. That's the main <coughs> the main purpose of the card. Alright, let's go on to grade twos. Four copies of her. No, no, must put the hollows. Yeah. So four copies. When this unit attack hits the vanguard, you may e special count blast one prism if you do. So that one card on your rear guard circle and bounce it back to your hand and you can draw one card. So that's freaking awesome because you can combine with her to create a plus one for no common blast cost and one free soul charge. So basically what she does is early game, she doesn't have a GB1 so early game you can pull up a skill. When your attack hits you can get a plus one and if you bounce her back, her skill will trigger which means you can count charge one and soul charge one and then you choose one unit gains with 4k power. So basically making her skill free if you bounce her back. But otherwise, you can come plus one to draw and it's still freaking amazing. The best part about her is she allows you to uh, bounce back one, which can trigger a lot of effects as well. Alright, next is four copies of Sunshine Rosa. Um, she is a bit of a... She might contradict with the deck a bit. But I find her very useful because most of the time, I use her not as an attacker, but I use her mostly as a super defender. Because her skill is, whenever you have a limb break vanguard, limb break four vanguard, you may pay a cost of Soul Blast 1. If other cards get bounced back to your hand, you may Soul Blast 1. And then select two, one unit on the field and... Sh select one unit on the field, both that unit and her gain a 3k power. So, you could, so what you could do is, when you're riding into her, you can bounce back something like... Let's say you have a few like that. You bounce her back, Count Blast 1 plus 5k power. Her skill Soul Blast 1 plus 3k plus 3k. So your Vanguard is definitely gonna become like what? 19k, got 19k Vanguard, so it's easy to guard everything. Easy gaming, man. Yeah, got 19 big Vanguard. Most of your opponents regards that it's got for 10k or less. It's definitely not gonna hit true for her. So that's why she's good. She's a good defender. I play four copies of her just because of that. And she can also use a skill because Vert is also a limit break. When you break right and you do your uh, gun, it's also a limit break. So it's not, she's not totally useless to be honest, I really like her. Yeah, she's used as a defensive tank. Next is two copies of Celtic. Celtic is when this unit is bounced back from your regard to your hand, you can so plus one, select one unit and it gets a 4k power. So it's good because you can bounce back. Once again, G unit bounce, <coughs> G guardian bounce back, gain plus 9k instantly. So you, your opponent, you probably won't need to guard anymore after that because your Vanguard got a 19k base and if you have Ross on a few it becomes 20k plus base. Alright let's go on to great ones. First we play 4 copies of G Perfect Guards. Alright um, you could use her actually. Yeah I recommend using Prism Duo but this deck doesn't use much kind of blast so I didn't really have a problem. So you could play either one of these. I like her because her eyes are blue. Yeah. Waifu, waifu choice. So yeah. So, on Flipper Perfect Guards, <clears throat> to be completely honest, this deck doesn't eat a lot of Count Blast, so it's fine if you don't play. You can play any Perfect Guard, to be honest. I, in testing, I didn't have problem with Count Blast, because this deck is just so efficient, especially with the next card that we play. Four copies of uh, Princess Letty. Princess Letty is amazing, because she is able to counter charge and soul charge one whenever, whenever she's bounced back, which is very easy with this deck now, because everything you do bounce back, bounce back stuff. So you probably won't be using any Count Blast at all. And against a Spock and your... You can also power up your ray guards as well to hit magic numbers if you need to. So four copies of Princess Letty. Four copies of the green color one. This emerald, I think it's emerald. So what she does is Um when this card bounce back from your ray guard circle to your hand, you may bounce back at select two uh, prism units you control and bounce them back to your hand. If you do, select two uh if you do select one unit gets a um 5k power. So there's um there was one time that I was fighting against a very very strong meta deck and I actually pulled up a combo which 
shuts down a seven attack. I think it was the Ogmar Brave. The Ogmar Brave didn't do shit against me because I just pull up one combo and yeah, Anton. Anton, bro, Anton. Yeah. She's good because, okay, what you do is you have her. You have maybe her. Bounce back, bounce back her. Maybe bounce back Princess Letty as well. So what you do is you bounce back her, her skill trigger, bounce back two more units. Let's for example, bounce back two. So plus 5k, her skill plus another 5k, plus 10k, plus another 3k, then plus another 4k from Princess Letty. So your Vanguard's now 26k plus. So your opponent's probably just gonna enter now after that. Yeah, she's there because defensive options. This deck has enough offense. I need to fix more on the defense. So yeah, let's go on to the last great, uh, great ones. For, uh, three copies of Strike Helpers. This deck is a bit problematic on not having, not being able to strike properly because when you whenever you strike into next stage, you need to have two units on at least to strike. Two great trees to strike at least. Because one, you need one great tree to perform your strike. Second, you need another great tree to put on top to rewrite. This is why it's, it is not exactly the next stage. Yeah. So, um, Strike Help, although Strike is not Prism, sh she's really needed in the deck. I really find, find myself using her a lot. So I tested 2 is not enough, 3 is just nice. 4 is, might be a little overkill, but 4 is fine, I feel. Because this deck really needs that. Needs that break. Need, needs that Strike. Alright, let's go to Triggers. The Trigger we have is 4 copies of Crit, Aichi Sando. So, Aichi cross Crossdresser. Her skill is... Whenever she's bounced back, back to your hand, you may count plus one and review her from your hand and then shuffle her back into your deck. If you do, you may search your deck for either a card name with Rosa in the name. So Rosa. Or a card name with Vert. <coughs> so you can either search one of these cards. So she's great because he, she, he, she is great because he's able to tutor you out. Search out cards that you need for either striding or defensive. So it's a very nice card to have and bouncing is easy in the deck. So. And crit triggers, scoring more crits wins games, you know. Yeah, play 8 crits. Because it's a standard aggressive deck. 4 draws, because it's prism. Um, I will try to max out my prism if I can. If I can't, it's fine, but I'll, I'll just play because it's prism the name. I don't think we have another crit with prism, so... We only have 2 crits with prism in the name so far. 4 copies of heal triggers, because heal is meta nowadays, thanks to G Guardians, and 1 copy of her. Whenever a prism, original name prism, writes, it's placed on the Vanguard circle. So if you strike onto her with the prism name, so so you strike on these units, you can bounce back one card on your field. Yeah, one other card back on your field. So yeah, very handy card to have. Because you want to clear up your space so that you can use your skills, your on core skills. For example, when you on, you call stuff, you you call stuff to gain power. You know, a skill. Alright, so that's the great zeros. Let's go to the strides, which is consists which consists of most of the new stuff, I think. Four copies of Vert. So she's the new Vert we have. Her skill is really good. Her skill is basically she is <coughs> a next stage in a way. Late break four. After this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may pay the cost of flipping a copy of her face up in the G zone. And then discarding three cards from my hand. Um, from my previous video, I forgot to discard three, but I did later in the game. So I did, okay, guys. So yeah. So basically, it's her cost is flip up one, pay three. So it's something on next stage. And then after that, from your hand, from your hand, uh, right over, return back to the G zone, and then right over one card. So that's what happens. So after that, you perform limit break. So Limbrick kicks in, she gains a 10k power, and when she attacks, she can gain her use of skill again. So you can activate the break right, bounce back cards to your hand. Oh, sorry, I forgot to explain something very important. Um, flip out one copy of herself, face up, discard three, and then bounce back two cards on your field back into your hand, and then right over her. So what you could do is, even if you have her in regard, you can use a skill which bounce back two cards with the regard, bounce back hand, then you can right over her. That is very important because sometimes you may not have enough attackers and you can just call her and just whack. Okay, then I bounce my hand and right again. So that's why she's good. After that, you can break right and bounce back two other cards from your hand and draw one additional card and then gain the stanky power. So it makes you hit harder. 
very good. So this is why it's like a next stage because next stage basically degrades itself. It is a stronger next stage at a higher cost. That why that's what I can say. So yeah, Priest free symbol card, very very good card. I mostly use her in the game once or twice only because. Once I break right, I just go for the kill with Olivia because Olivia really destroys my opponent hard. Because Olivia is able to call a lot of regas as well. All right, next is four copies of Labrador. Labrador is my one of my favorite Bermudas since the old times. Her skill is activate, flip a copy of herself face up in G zone, and then select two Prism units on your field, and they gain plus five K power and a skill. At the end of the battle, that you that you need boost or attacks, you can bounce it back to your hand. So it's great because of stuff like... Of first, it's great because it gains plus 10k power, which means your opponent has to guard, throw extra cards to guard your regards. And secondly, it's great because you can trigger cards like her to unflip stuff or to power up your regards. There are so many things you can do in this deck with that bounce and that 5k power. So Labrador, very good. You could even use her as a first strike because it doesn't need to... It is not GB2, so you could use her as a first strike if you have to, which I do most of the time. Unless I have Limb Break 4. Um, uh, for another thing you guys to note is, this is not GB2, so you can use her at your first strike as well. If you have 4 damage or more, use, I definitely recommend you um, striking to her. Alright, next is 4 copies of Olivia. Oh, Olivia got this degraded to a rare. But her rare is still very expensive because she is only 5. 5 copy of her rare per carton. So, yeah, beautiful. The Queen of Mermaids. Her skill is when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may count blast one and flip a copy of her face up. If you do, select up to five cards of your hand. Select up to five cards in on your field and bounce it back if they are have dif if they have different names. And then superior call up to three cards of your hand. If you if you superior call two this way, <laughs> sorry, a bit of flu. You superior call two this way, she gains an additional crit. So two or more this way, I believe. Wait, is it two? Oh, if you bounce back 3, then you must call 2. If you bounce back 3 and call 2 to the field, she gets additional crit. So she's good because she can pressurize your opponent and give you additional attack with her regard at a cost of 1 count blast. So she is still my MVP of the deck as a finisher. Most likely, it's early game, I dub double double attack my opponent with Vert, pressure with Labrador, then use her as a finisher. I'll go use any of them as finishers. So, yeah. um, so let's go to G units. The G unit is freaking MVP of the deck because with the G units you can pull off so much trash that your opponents really wanna slap you with. Getting a huge trigger in the hand is probably better than getting a perfect guard in your hand. So let us go on the, the, the G units. First one is we have I played three copies of her. She is the MVP of the deck. MVP defense of the deck. When this unit enters the guardian circle, you may select one card on your field and bounce it back to your hand. And then call it back to your guardian circle. If it if that unique card from the caught onto the Guardian Circle has the same name as the card that is bounced back to your hand, this unit gets plus an additional 5k shield. So it's just a 20k shield basically guaranteed if you have a card on the field. So guaranteed 20k shield. That's the first thing to note. Second thing to note is with her, the card bounce back will trigger her skill, which allows you to counter blast one to gain to let her gain plus 5k power. So that's additional one less card you have to guard with for the rest of the turn. Note the rest of the turn is very important. And then let's not forget that there are so many cards in this deck that can trigger so much stuff. So you have Rosa, you can Soul Blast 1, and again with 3k power. So now you're gaining 8k power def 8k power in defense. In addition to what you're guarding with. And then next, if you bounce her back, additional 4k power. And then here. Alright, so let me show you a little disgusting combo which you can pull off if you have the stuff. So what you do is, let's say you you are, do your opponent's turn, you are riding as her. After you do your break right stuff which almost rape your opponent. What you do is, let's say you have a few like this. There's some random attackers. Can you see it? Alright, so I G got. I bounce back one card back to my hand. Bounce her back and then and then call it back to your field. So call it to Guardian Circle. So she will gain 20k shield already. Then her skill can trigger. Um, select two units. Sorry, we trigger her skill first. So you gain plus 5k power. So you gain plus 5k power. 
And then now her skill triggers. You can bounce back two cards back into your hand. So I'm gonna bounce back these two cards to my hand. So I can Soul Blast one and Soul Charge one, Counter Charge one to add 8k power here and add another 5k power here. And then you can Soul Blast one plus 3k power plus 3k power. That is adding like over 30, almost 30k for the rest of the turn. So your opponent basically after that can just end their turn because they'll, unless they score triple triggers, it is impossible to hit her. So yeah, this is why she is very good. I I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, but if I had more, if I drew more huge triggers in my previous game against Paddy, I might be able to pull it off and win because I'll be defending very, very easy to defend. So yeah, that's one combo you can pull off. Just need to think more if you wanna uh, pull off such such nasty combos. This deck needs to think a lot. And finally, one copy of her, uh, Pirate's Melody, I think. Sailor's Melody. Her skill is, when this unit enters the Guardian Circle, you may review one card from your hand, and if you have a card which is the same grade on a few, that a card review, for example. So, for example, let's say from your hand, you review her, and if you happen to have a grade one on your few, you can trigger her, give her plus 5k shield. So, it's a very, very easy card to pull off. Yeah, um, Bermu has a very, very good set of G Guardians. Let's just say that. So, I hope you guys enjoyed my deck profile on my Prism Bird deck. Be sure to add me on Facebook and subscribe to my channel for more awesome deck profiles. Peace out and love you guys. Rawr.